The craving of God's word is what we keep talking about over and over again this week. And it is my sincere prayer that you would have a craving to understand God's word. I'm going to pray the same prayer over you at the end of today's episode that a missionary prayed over me that was life-changing for me. Stay tuned. Do you sometimes doubt if you're truly hearing God's voice or if it's really your own? Or have you been in a season where it feels like He's completely silent? Have you been praying for a way to learn how to hear His voice more clearly? Hey friends, I'm Rachel, host of the Hearing Jesus Podcast. If you are ready to grow in your faith and to confidently step into your identity in Christ, then join me as we dig deep into God's Word so you can learn to live out your faith in your everyday life. The Hearing Jesus Podcast is so excited to partner with Compassion International. We believe in Compassion's mission to release children from poverty in Jesus' name. I've seen the impact myself through the letters and the updates that I've received as a sponsor. It's not just changing the lives of children, it's changing entire families, whole communities, always through the local church and always in Jesus' name. When you sponsor a child, you ensure access to quality education, medical checkups, healthy food, clean water, and most importantly, the love of Jesus, delivered through a church in their community because of a generous, caring sponsor like you. And you can speak life, love, and hope to your sponsored child through personal letters that you'll exchange. I hope you'll join me in sponsoring a child through Compassion today. All you have to do is pull out your phone, open up a text, and text hearing Jesus to 83393. You'll get back a text with a picture of a child who is waiting for a sponsor and a link to sponsor that child. You can also go to compassion.com forward slash hearing Jesus to choose a boy or a girl to sponsor. When you sponsor a child, we will send you a copy of She Hears Learning to Listen to Jesus, my Bible study, as a token of our thanks for investing in the life of a child. Thank you for joining me and sponsoring a child through Compassion today. Hey friends, welcome back to the Hearing Jesus Podcast. You made it to day five of our topic of study in the Spiritual Discipline series. I am proud of you for sticking with me this long, and I pray that this week of study has been a blessing to you, has revealed some things to you, has opened your eyes to some things. If you have lingering questions, please reach out to me. It's rachel at shehears.org. Again, I pray this meets you where you're at. So there's two steps, okay? There's understanding. What is it saying? And then there's interpreting. What is it meaning? What is it saying? And what is it meaning? So this is where your things like commentaries or Bible studies would come into play. Um, And I think also reading things in terms of the context of what it was written. If you don't understand the Old Testament, you're going to have a hard time understanding the New Testament. You can't understand some of the New Testament if you don't understand the Old Testament. So that's where I think a good study Bible comes in. I'm actually going to do a list of resources for you. I will try to get, get that up and put that in the show notes of some online resources that are free that you can go to get some good information, good study. But I think, um, there's a couple recommendations I have for study Bibles too, but you want to look for a resource that helps you to understand this whole meta narrative of scripture. And by meta narrative, I mean, what is the entire storyline of scripture? Where does what you're reading fit in with the entire storyline of what God does in the scriptures? We have to understand that there's a big difference between the study of the scriptures and and just a devotional reading of scripture. And I think what a lot of us do is we devotionally read scripture. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a place for that. There is certainly a role for devotional reading in our lives. But in the study of scripture, the high priority is placed on the interpretation of what this means. In the devotional reading of scripture, there's a high priority placed on the application, what this means for me. But too often what happens is people rush into this application stage and they bypass the interpretation stage. They want to know what it means for them before they know what it means. And I'll tell you what, um, that sets you up for a lot of heartache. If you are claiming something for your own life because this is what it means to you without understanding what it meant 
you're setting yourself up for trouble because that's, we have promises from God, but we can't manipulate something to be a promise for us when it was meant for, for ancient Israel. I think one of the common things I hear is um, people quote all the time at like graduations and things. Oh, um, you know, from the verse from Jeremiah, God has a hope and a plan for, for the future for your life. And while that's true, we have to remember, where did God write that? Well, it was in the context of the captives in Babylon. And it was people that had been living in captivity. There was a 70-year period where they were living in captivity. And in the midst of their suffering and their captivity, God says, I have a plan and a hope and a future for you. Well, what does that do? That informs us that in the midst of what feels like distance and separation from God, God is still present and real. And he has a plan and a hope for our future. And that informs us as far as what that means for us today. But claiming 100% that 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 word was for us, it may or may not be the case. Because if you are living a lifestyle that is contrary to God's word, and you're just going to say, well, I have a, hand, a hope for my future that I'm going to win uh, a million dollars at, at, you know, when I'm gambling, I mean, come on, you, you just, there's, and there's people that do that. That might sound like an extreme example, but I had a grandfather that would do that. He would take and manipulate scripture and say, oh, well, you know, God has a plan and and I have a hope. I have a hope right now. And I'm going to pray that I'm going to win big. And really what he did is he gambled away my aunt's college fund while she was in college. So people will do that. They will manipulate the scripture. And that's not what it's about. What this is about is understanding what the scripture said in the context of what it was originally said, and then allowing that to inform how we understand and what we learn about God. When we study a book of the Bible or a passage of scripture, we are really seeking to be controlled by the intent of the author. And so what I mean by that is if God is teaching something in a particular passage of scripture, and we are reading and studying The goal is to submit ourselves to what we're learning there and what the intention of God was when he wrote that. So we need to be determined to hear what he is saying, not what we want him to say. And that can be hard. But if we want life transforming truth, this is not just about good feelings. This is not just about reading something that's going to make us feel good for the day. This is about something that is going to renew our mind. Sometimes that's difficult, but that's really the key. It is difficult sometimes. In fact, the Apostle Peter found some things uh, difficult. It says, uh, let me see, it's 2 Peter, I think, uh, chapter 3, verses 15, 16. He would say there was um, things from our beloved brother Paul that were hard to understand. And Peter, like, had an up-close and personal relationship with Jesus. And if Peter found it hard to understand, we are going to do as well. And we need to work at it. That's why it's called a discipline. My name's Preston Sprinkle, and I host the Theology in the Raw podcast. Theology in the Raw aims to help believers to think Christianly about theological and cultural issues by engaging in curious conversations with a diverse range of thoughtful people. I have conversations with a wide range of different guests who come from different perspectives, and no topic is off limits. Sexuality, abortion, politics, LGBTQ, warfare, violence, marijuana, immigration, you name it. If you have a theological or cultural issue that you have been wrestling with, with over 1,100 episodes, we've probably talked about it on Theology in the Raw. Along with conversations with various people, I also address questions sent in from my audience every month. And occasionally, I will talk about some of my latest research projects that I'm currently working on. Theology in the Raw is not for everyone. It is uncut, uncensored, and I don't give trigger warnings. So check out Theology in the Raw through your favorite podcast app. So daily devotional reading is certainly helpful, but that's not study. It's a good practice, but it doesn't replace study. Instead, we have to be intentional about it. So as we're talking about being intentional and having study, that means that we need to block out time for it. What I do is on Fridays, I don't schedule any meetings for Fridays. There are no meetings for Fridays. Um, and I catch up on, on most of my emails and things I need to do for work in the morning. And then I have a two hour block of time where all I do is I study God's word. That two hour chunk is what fuels me the rest of the week. 
but I have to plan for it. So if somebody says, hey, can I schedule a Friday afternoon meeting? Nope, because I already have an appointment. My appointment is to study God's word. People will try to get into that time. Nope. I have to be intentional in order to block out that time. If you are curious on where to start, uh, this probably sounds like a shameless plug. I, I hope it doesn't feel that way. Part of the whole reason that we started She Hears, the vision of that, is to help you hear from God. And some of these things that we're talking about are tools and resources that I built into the Bible study that we have, the She Hears Bible study. If you would like to get a copy of that, it's available wherever books are sold. If you go on my link tree, you can download uh, the first part of it for free, so you can at least get some of the color method information on there. If you go on Amazon, there's a link to a video where I explain the color method. There are free videos in the resource section on my website. Lots of tools to kind of help you. My heart really is that you would start to crave God's word. And the, and I'm going to pray over you the same way that that missionary prayed over, for, over me. That's what I want to pray over for you. Because what I will say is, most of you know, if you've spent any time listening to me, I came from mess. I came from a, a mess of a life. And who I am now is not who I was. And if you knew the person that I was when I was younger, you probably wouldn't recognize the person that I am now. And the difference is renewing the mind through Bible study. The difference is Jesus. The difference is what the Holy Spirit did in me. And it wasn't necessarily me sitting down to study, but it was meeting God on those pages as he revealed himself through his word. So I want to pray that over you. Dear God, I thank you so much for my friends that they've listened this far and they have sought to just learn how to dive in and study your word. Lord God, I ask right now that you would give them a craving to not just read your word, but to understand your word, God, because we know that when we know the truth, it's that truth that sets us free. The knowledge of the truth sets us free. So Lord God, I pray for um, just a divine appointment that when they set out to study your word, that you would meet them right where they're at, God, in such a way that they would not be able to keep quiet about what it is that you're teaching them as you're revealing things to them, as you're revealing yourself to them because of the change that will happen in their heart. Lord God, I thank you that you desire and long for us to have a relationship like that with, with between the two of us and that there is no place that we can go that you you aren't already there. So Lord, I thank you for your presence and your peace and your provision of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey friends, if this podcast helped encourage, empower, or equip you in your walk with God, I would love it if you would head over to Apple Podcasts and leave me a review. That's the number one way you can support my show. You can also join our free Facebook community or Instagram page where I share inspirational tips, bonus content, resources, and prayer throughout the week. Hey, I want you to know I'm praying for you. Know that you are so loved. Keep going. Keep going.